Hello class and welcome to the course, Health Psychology. I'm super excited to have you here today. My name is Dr. Neil Sogi and I will be your instructor for this course. If you're ever wondering how to pronounce my name, it is Sogi. So just think of a Stogie cigar. And if you ever uh, are in doubt, uh, just you can call me Soggy if you want, or you can just call me Neil. Either way is fine. The title for this course is Health Psychology, Psych 3930, and the overview of this course is that we will be examining the psychological, social, and biological factors and how they interact and influence health and illness. And you will explore the systematic application of psychology to health promotion and maintenance, illness prevention and treatment, the determinants of health and illness, health care systems, and health policy. You can email me anytime at nsogi at upei.ca and that is my primary means of contact with my students. Please do allow for two business days for me to respond. Please remember that I do have hundreds of students and sometimes it takes me a day or two to get through all of my emails. If you would like to set up a time to visit more face-to-face -face, um, while I am away from campus, we can still do a virtual meeting through Zoom. And so just simply email me and we can set up a time to have a meeting. The text for this course is Brannon. It's a brand new text entitled Health Psychology and Introduction to Behavior and Health, the 10th edition, offered by Cengage Learning. If you choose to use an older version of the text, that's fine. Just be sure to follow the theme of the week rather than the chapter number listed in the syllabus. In addition, you do not need to purchase any extra materials that may be available as adjuncts to the text. Um, the text itself is fine and any other materials I will provide on U the UPEI Moodle course site. If you want to follow along in your syllabus on page one, we have uh, some additional resources available. So there's uh, access to the library databases as well as to Purdue OWL if you have any questions as far as citations or paper writing go. Let's take a look now at the course schedule for the week. This course will be a more or less asynchronous course. It's entirely online and so that gives you a good deal of flexibility but with a word of caution. There are things that you are expected to do each and every week and if you ignore those things for one week then they're going to pile up very quickly for the next week. So that's the negative but that's the kind of thing that's going to happen in any course. The wonderful thing about having an asynchronous course is that you get to set your schedule for the most part. So if you want to do this course at 11 o'clock at night, perfectly fine. If you want to do it at 6 in the morning, perfectly fine. Whatever works for your schedule is how this will work. Now, from week to week, there are things that you will need to read, things that you will need to watch as far as uh, videos, other th assignments that you will need to do, like small quizzes or assignments. Overall, though, there's a lot of flexibility in here, and I will break down the details of that a little bit more as we go through. So the first week, September 8th through to 11th, what I want you to do is what you're doing right now. You've uh, logged into the course Moodle site, and I'm just going to want you to go through all of the materials, go through your syllabus, go through the course guide and rubrics, Get familiar with how I have structured things. I, what I like to do each week is set up all of your tasks very simply. So you simply go through step one, watch the introduction. Step two, do your reading. Step three, watch your lecture. Step four and so on. 
so that all of the expectations of the week are fulfilled very simply. And in that way, you can keep yourself simply organized and on track for this course. This first week, what I'd like you to do, and please remember to uh, take some time with this, is to simply introduce yourself to the core, to the class uh, through the discussion site and take some time and look through other people's posts and reply to at least two people's posts welcoming them to this course. The next week, September 13th through to the 18th, we will look at an introduction to health psychology. You'll be reading chapter one and there will be an course expectations quiz so that will be evaluating what it is that you've is expected of you and this will be based upon the material that you will do this week week three we'll be looking at health beliefs and conducting health research you'll be expected to read chapter three and there will be a personal education plan that is due week four We'll be seeking and receiving health care as a topic, and you will need to complete your first quiz. Week five, adhering to health behavior and completing another quiz. Week six, wonderful, right in the middle of the semester there, we're gonna take a break. And what I simply want you to do there is to work on your health education and promotion presentation. You have a little bit of time to be creative in there. Better to get it done early on in the semester. And since we just finished completing a lecture on adhering to health behavior, this would be a good time to start constructing your health education and promotion presentation. Week seven, we come back and we'll be looking at managing stress. Week eight, immunity and disease. Week nine, managing pain. Week 10, considering alternatives. So complementary and alternative medicine. Week 11, we'll look at cardiovascular disease. Week 12, we'll look at cancer. Week 13, we will look at illness. And at this time, I will want you to complete your final quiz and submit your health education presentation. Week 14, all I'm going to ask you to do there is complete your course evaluation. Of course, you're going to give a, a great evaluation. I have no doubt about that. And finally, we will have no final exam. Isn't that wonderful? You will have done all your work at that point and so no stress during that final exam time. Wonderful. Now a little bit about the assignments and the various weights. Now as we mentioned by September 18th you will be expected to submit your course expectations quiz and have completed that simple online quiz on Moodle. It's 10 minutes, nice and easy, and the value of that is 5% of your mark. And the intention there is for you to actually take the time and be very clear as to what the expectations of the course are. So be sure to read all of the course expectation material as well as the course assignment rubrics so that you understand what are the expectations for this course and in line with that I want you to submit a personal education plan that will be due September 25th the idea here is for you to be very creative in how you do this so that it's fun and enjoyable for you but I want you to be able to give some thought to how am I going to be successful in this course I do want you to be successful in this course that is of utmost importance to me uh, not necessarily I'm not so concerned about grades I'm sure you are but I'm interested in that you're engaged and that you're learning and be transformed by this course so 
I want you to evaluate what are your strengths and weaknesses? What kinds of opportunities do you have for learning here? What are some threats to your success? And to be able to lay all of those out in some way. Um, it might be a graphic, it might be some kind of schedule. Uh, I do want you to have a clear schedule in there as to when you will complete critical tasks. And if you could have that submitted and uploaded to the Moodle site by September 25th, that's fantastic. Now, there is something that is a little bit different in this course, but it's something that maybe not everybody wants to take part in. This is the intense, hard part of the course, and that is honors discussions. If you're one of those individuals that's striving per for peak performance in everything they do, then there is will be something each week where you will be able to engage in a topic of discussion where we will review journal articles and post responses and evaluations and debate and discuss with our peers and we'll look at that a little bit more deeply but that's something that needs to be done every week it can't be late this is the one thing that can't be late and just to be mindful here that this is something that will be evaluated at a much much higher level than everything else and this is worth 10% of your mark. Now, not everybody's going to choose to do this because it is very demanding and I recognize that. Um, but just to be clear that this is the top 10% of your mark, not an extra 10%. Then we come to our weekly quizzes. And it's good to always stop and look back and look at where we've been in our learning and look forward to where we're going and to kind of consolidate our knowledge. And that's what the lookout quiz is for. So it's a little 10 minute quiz, normally 10 minutes, where you will uh, log in. And this is something that needs to be done individual, obviously. There'll be four of these. Each of them is worth 5%. But here's the thing with this. Each of these, because they're about consolidating your memory and consolidating your learning, you get more than one chance at this. So if you feel like you didn't do well, you can go back and look through your materials again. You know what the questions are gonna be. So you can come back and make a second attempt at this, okay? So that's something that's due every week. Every other week, generally speaking, there will be a content quiz. These quizzes are similar to the lookout quizzes, but they are more for evaluation of what you've learned up to this point. So they're going to be a little bit more summative in their learning. And you only get one shot at each of these. And there are five of these. Each of them is worth 5%. And the benefit of having a content quiz is then we don't have to worry about midterm exams. We don't have to worry about final exams. And so it, it will alleviate some of the stress in our lives as we break down the assessment and evaluation into these smaller and smaller chunks. And then finally, we have our health education presentation. And this is, a, again, a time where I want you to be creative and make some important choices. You will have to make some choices as to what you want to focus on and how you want to present this. But I want you to do some research about a community need and select a behavior that people need to change to change or improve their health. And I want you to create a presentation. And it, this can be in the form of an audio or video or poster or advertisement that informs and persuades people toward healthier living. I'm not going to give you a uh, time limit as far as an audio or visual presentation, although I, I don't think I would want something more than 10 minutes. Um, uh, even a two-minute ad might be great for this sort of thing or a poster or an advertisement and we'll go over some of the details for that but that is worth 10 percent of your mark and that is due at the end of the semester on december 4th um, please also take some time to look through the various policies there's an expectation that you will engage regularly on moodle i can see when you were last logged into Moodle, so please make an effort to engage every week. Uh, 
a reminder as well that while I will be trying to be gracious with you, there are some assignments where there cannot be a grace period. And for those late assignments, then you're just going to receive a zero. So if you um, are trying to complete something, but you miss even the grace period, then you're automatically going to get a zero on that assignment or that quiz. So just something to keep in mind there. Now, if you wouldn't mind taking a look at the course guide and assignment rubric, it's important that you read through this document just so you understand um, some of the course expectations. So overall, I want you to first off to be realistic about your expectations. Um, as your professor, I, I do want you to succeed. Please do not misunderstand me. However, not everybody's going to get an A. Um, university administrators, just by way of example, expect that a, most of students will get a B or a C. So that's kind of a given in university education. But remember that along those lines, a B is still a good mark. And it's still an indication that you have done some really good work. And so as far as your professor, I'm certainly happy with that. Um, and also remember that university and college experience is very different from secondary education. It's not uncommon for someone who is a straight A student all through their secondary education to experience B's and C's in their university education. University students, that whole population, remember, is the cream of the crop of the population. So you're already the cream of the crop. You're at the top. And so if you're the middle of the pack at the top, you're still doing extremely well. And I want you to always feel good about yourself simply for being a part of the education process at university. That itself is a huge accomplishment. And I want you to recognize that. So don't beat yourself up if your marks aren't quite as high as you want them to be. I'm certainly not going to do that. The important thing here is to look for ways to improve, look for ways to grow and transform. That's the important thing in your university experience. So always take some time to do some extra work for uh, looking at the expectations for an assignment, for um, engaging other people when you can. It's really important to, whenever possible, to discuss what is going on within your course. And, and please be mindful, don't be looking for criticisms of the professor or of other students, but as a way of growing together, it's very positive to uh, share your work share your ideas for various assignments. Not in a way that you're going to copy them, but as a way of broadening your own expectation, your own perspectives of where do you fit in? What kinds of things could you do to grow in your perspective? Now, sometimes you may not agree with the kinds of marks that I give. Please be mindful that I've been a professor for decades and decades and I have a good sense of what is an A, what is a B, what is a C as far as assignments go. However, if you believe that you need this evaluated by somebody else, your assignment evaluated by somebody else, there is always the possibility for you to request a uh, outside evaluation through the dean's office and that's certainly possible um, that will be something that is on your shoulders though not mine now the other thing to keep in mind here is that part of the role of a mark is to just to give you a sense of where you are in relation to your peers and in the learning process so remember a mark is not a reflection on your value as a person it's not 
a reflection of how I see you as a person, but only of the work that was submitted. And the work that was submitted is not you. So be clear about that. You might have poured a lot of yourself into the work, but it's still not you. There is a separation that needs to be developed there. So never let a great mark allow you to be arrogant. And never let a low mark discourage you. Every mark can teach you something. And that's something that's important to remember. Now, as far as getting in, in touch with me, um, because this is a online course and because I am teaching the course remotely, we can contact through either email or Moodle if you would like to have a conversation. We can arrange that through Zoom. Simply email me and request a meeting and please allow a couple of days for me to respond. And What I will do is we will arrange a time and then about 10 minutes before that time I will email you a link to a Zoom meeting and you simply need to click on that link and we can have a little conversation. So, nice and easy. Now, a little bit about the various assignments and the expectations. The course expectations quiz is helping you to be clear of the expectations for the course. So it's important for you to know what to expect from the course and what is expected of you. So take some time go through the syllabus, go through all the rubrics, and ensure that you understand particularly the, the course schedule and the expectations. Now, this little test will be online and it will be part of one of those steps. And after your first attempt, you can review your answers and because you have two attempts at this. It's not something where I want to be hard on you. I want you to consolidate your knowledge. So the test will be available September 13th through to the 18th plus the grace period. And the grace period here is normally 14 days. So up to 14 days after September 18th, this test will be available. However, after that 14 days, this test will not be available. And so if you have not completed it in that time, then you will automatically get a zero for that assignment. So please be sure to take the time to go through that. The next thing, personal education plan. There again, I'm just simply going to want you to look at, okay, what are my resources for this assignment? What are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? So my SWOT analysis and create a schedule of when you will complete your critical tasks. Okay, It's not a difficult assignment, but it is something that will help you organize. Something important to put in here, though, is if you are interested in completing the honors discussions, you must declare it in your personal education plan. If you do not declare it in your personal education plan, then you will not be eligible to complete the honors discussions. So please remember to do that if you're wanting to complete the honors discussions. It helps me to organize what we're going to be doing with the honors discussions. And just a reminder here as well, the due date for this is September 25th, plus the 14 days of the grace period. Okay. The lookout quizzes. So again, I'm interested in you consolidating your knowledge here, looking back, looking at what we've done the previous week, and consolidating that knowledge through some tests. And so these little quizzes will be 10 minutes. Each of them is worth 5%. You have two attempts at each of these. These are to be done individually. And normally they're due on the Saturday evening of the week of the course, plus the 14 days. So if you are sick, if you are just zoned out for a week, you can still complete these. 
you have that extra 14 day period. Then comes the content quizzes. These are a little bit more difficult. They're very similar to the lookout quizzes. However, you only get one shot at them. So be sure that you have a stable internet connection, that you maybe have a secondary internet connection available like a hotspot on your cell phone so that if you're having problems with your internet you can quickly switch over to the next one and complete the quiz. It doesn't take a lot of time to complete the quiz um, but it is important to get these done. Each content quiz is due of the week as per the schedule with the course plus it, it, so it's due at the end of the week so on a Saturday evening it's due plus the 14 day grace period now the thing with these is that because they are more evaluative than in their intention than the consolidation of the lookout quizzes reviews of your attempts will not be available until after the grace period after the 14 days and that is partly to uh, while I want you to be able to consolidate your memory through the content quizzes uh, it, it's to help avoid the temptation of sharing questions with your peers not that any of you would do that but it just helps to avoid that temptation then finally, at the end of the course, we have our health education presentation. Here, what I want you to do is, again, research about a community need and select a behavior that people need to change to improve their health. So I'm going to want you to do that audio or visual or poster or advertisement or cartoon or comic or something that informs and persuades people toward healthy living. Now, the presentation will need to be accompanied by a short APA formatted research paper. And here, if you don't know how to format an APA paper, where that link on the first page of your syllabus will help you, guide you through that process. Um, and what this APA paper will do will describe the research about the topic and evidence supporting why your presentation should be effective. So it's your assignment isn't just the presentation itself. It's also that supporting document. Minimum of five page, maximum of 10 pages. So it, it's not a lot of research that needs to go into this because please remember APA, your first page is numbered. It is your title page, your second page is your abstract, your third page is the body of the paper, so, and then your last page is your references page. So if you just had your title page, your abstract, two pages of content in your references page, you've already reached the minimum. So it's, and, and the content page, everything is double spaced in APA. So it's a nice, easy part of the assignment. You have all semester to complete this. Now, this will be overall, will be an overall evaluation. Uh, 10 points, a 10 out of 10 will be superior work, well-written, thoughtful, well-researched, very creative. And at some point you will have done something where I go, wow, I've never seen that before. That is a great idea. Um, eight. Eight or nine is excellent work. All the components were there. You didn't surprise me. It's not that you provided anything that I had never seen before, but you still did really, really awesome work. Uh, a seven would be good quality work. A five would be maybe there's some components missing. The depth wasn't quite there. There was some significant errors, for example, in APA formatting, that sort of thing. Uh, a two or three or one would be, you know, you just kind of phoned it in. You, there wasn't the kind of depth for the assignment that one would expect from a university assignment. Now, this health education presentation is due December 4th. And here's an important thing I want you to remember. Because we're at the end of the semester, I can't be as gracious as I would want to be. So the grace period for this is not 14 days. 
the absolute best I can do is a grace period until December 11th. And what I'm going to want you to do, if you're looking for the December 11th date, to email me and let me know that you expect to have it in by December 11th. So to be clear, it is due on December 4th, not December 11th. It is due December 4th, but you have until December 11th to submit it through Moodle without a penalty. Now, after December 11th, you will get a zero for that assignment. So please keep in mind, unless you have uh, it's a special dispensation from the dean, after December 11th, it will be a zero. Okay. Now, let's go on to the honors discussions. Again, uh, this is a place for those students who, and I, I assume you're all majoring in psychology or some adjunct field, for those students who are highly motivated and really think they might want to go on to a master's degree or a doctoral degree, this is a place for those students to strive for that A range mark. Now, to keep in mind, theoretically it's possible to get an A-ish, A minus mark without completing the honors discussion successfully. So, uh, the whole deal with honors discussions is that I want you to push yourself and be pushed by others in this assignment and to do that consistently and to learn from others. Um, one of the important things for a researcher is to learn to engage with their peers in discussions. And so that is what this is training you to do. So each week you'll be given something to read, to watch, or to reflect upon. And you'll be expected to critically consume that research, to analyze it, to share your thoughts. And you'll be expected to post your thoughts in a thoughtful and professional manner and to evaluate your peers in that process. So how does it work? So if you're going to engage in the honors discussions, remember this is not an extra 10%. This is the last 10% of your mark. So from 90 to 100, this is where your mark is determined. So the first thing you will need to do is to participate you must declare your intention in your personal education plan assignment. If you've done that, now you're eligible to participate in the honors discussions. So at the beginning of every week, you will need to look at the honors discussions to read whatever is going on with the honors discussions and to post your thoughts by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. You then have a few days to read the replies of other peers and to think about them thoughtfully and to post responses to at least two peer posts by 11.59 p.m. Now, if you miss a week because you are sick, do not despair. You will have one week grace period is available for you. But if you miss after that week, then you're out unless you get a special dispensation from the office of the, of the Dean of Arts. Now, the other thing is that missing two weeks of discussions or failing to submit superior work for two weeks will ultimately result in a zero for your honors discussions. So you either are going to do excellent work for honors or nothing at all. And that is why I want to be clear that for those of you that really are not feeling up to doing uh, honors discussions and doing that extra work, uh, sometimes in life it's, it's important to just say, no, I'm not going to do that. And you know what, I, I totally understand that. But if you're wanting for that top, top, top mark, honors discussions are the way to go. 
uh, and I want you to remember, this is the most difficult part of the course by far. So it is possible to do well in the course without these discussions. So it's up to each student to decide what path they're going to follow. Now, I've mentioned a lot about the grace period, uh, but I want to clarify a little bit more as to why I have a grace period in there and how that all works. So I recognize that sometimes life can get out of hand. Life can be tough sometimes, particularly when you're in university. People say it's the best time in your life, but it really can be a difficult time in your life, a very turmoil time in your life. You're moving, you're um, getting into relationships, you're getting out of relationships, you're working and going to school. All these things can be happening. Plus, you might be struggling with some kind of illness. I mean, we are in the middle of a pandemic after all. So maybe you're having a breakup or you have a fight with a roommate or you catch the flu or you've had some kind of surgery. Whatever the reason, sometimes things just simply get out of hand and that can affect your coursework. So I'm offering you an automatic grace period. So you don't need to be emailing me for an extension. Uh, because after, because I've given you this grace period, you, probably best to not to ask for a further extension unless there's some really, really extreme circumstances. And then I will probably direct you to the Dean of Arts to um, get any further extensions. So here, here is how this is going to work. If you miss the due date or the deadline, don't panic. Okay, but at the same time. I want you to take these deadlines seriously for your own health and wellness as well as training for your professional career. However, for most of the assignments you have a week of automatic grace time where you can submit it. Um, now, what if you're sick or in surgery? Well, in those cases um, you can get an extra week. Now, what I've already said here is you can have up to 14 days. Okay, so uh, I think I'll probably go with that 14 days. However, um, please try to avoid using up all 14 days. But, because that's the absolute most that you're going to get. So in theory, you have up to two weeks after the assignment or quiz due date to complete and submit it. Lucky you. But I want you to remember that anything after that will be a zero for the assignment. It's not that I'm being mean. It's simply that that's part of life. You get time to do things and then you need to move on. Uh, deadlines cannot be dragged out forever. So this one week because of life stuff of forgetting and then extra week for illness grace period applies to the following course requirements. First off to the course expectation tests, to the personal education plan, to the lookout quizzes, and to the content quizzes. Now there are some components that are more stringent with their due dates and in these cases a one week grace period is only available if you've been granted exception from the Office of the Dean of Arts for the week of the due date. So if you send in a sick note, for example, from the doctor, then you're going to get an, a week. But that's only going to apply to the following areas. First off, the honors discussions. Honors discussions need to be handed in on time. So, handing in those late, not a good thing, unless you're, you know, really, really sick. And then the health education presentation assignment. And the extension no more than one week applies there, simply because we're at the end of the semester. And you've had the whole semester to get this assignment done. And I would, again, recommend that you have it done by the end, say, for example, of, the, of week six. But you don't have to hand it in until the end of the semester. But if you do hand it in uh, earlier, fantastic. Uh, finally, I'd just like to uh, clarify how assignments need to be submitted. 
there will be uh, assignment slots for each week that the assignment is due where the assignment should be submitted. That gives uh, a clear, accurate picture for you and for me as the professor that the assignment has been submitted. So if it's not there, then it hasn't officially been submitted. So please keep that in mind. The other thing I want to, to be mind you to be mindful of is please limit your submissions to PDF files whenever possible. And the reason for that is very often um, when you st start using very creative uh, different apps, uh, it makes it very difficult for the professor to evaluate them. First off, sometimes I don't even have the apps that will need to be used. Other times, uh, different programs will open differently on different computers, depending upon the versions. The nice thing about PDF is how it looks for you is how it's going to look for me. Now, if you're submitting an audio or visual, probably the best thing to do would be, say, for example, to upload it to YouTube and then simply send me, send me a link. And that way, we are both seeing the same thing. And I know that what I am seeing is what you were seeing and what you were happy with. Okay, so just some simple things to get us organized for this course. I'm really excited about this course. I'm excited to get to learn from each one of you. And I'm looking forward to you being incredibly successful in this course. One last thing I want to leave with you, and that is for those students that in the future want a reference from me, say, for example, you're going on to graduate school and you're looking for a professor to have a reference, I have a different email. It's my personal email and I don't want you to be emailing me um, with personal questions on that email. However, after the semester, if you are requiring a reference, that's probably the best place to get a hold of me because I'm never entirely sure how long my UPEI email will be available. So my personal email is drneil at hotmail.com. Please use that if you are asking for an educational reference for the future with me. I hope you enjoy and I hope you have a wonderful future. You take care. Bye-bye.